The credible James Ducker drops a detailed report on all things Manchester United managers, the targets, what's been done, the latest on Ten Hag's future, confirming no decision has been made yet, but dropping some hints about what that decision could be. This report's coming out that Tuchel already has an agreement that he wants Man United to be his next job should Eric Ten Hag be sat with his agent upon more. Will Cook set to watch Manchester United's training sessions overview the dressing room and make some discoveries and then maybe the final decision on Ten Hag's future. We'll talk about that in more detail. Anthony has still been causing outrage. Even Mopay is taking the Mikhail of Anthony online. Fabrizio Romano drops an update on all things transfers and the left-back situation. So we're going to dive into all of this in today's show. So please do hit that like button if you're new. Sorry, please do hit that like button and of course subscribe down below if you're new. It was said here, Manchester United believe there's some very interesting and talented young coaches working in Europe, such as Thiago Motta, Michael Huzata Girona, Roberto De Zerbi, and Ruben Amorin. It continues on to say other managers such as Gareth Southgate and Graham Potter are recognised as fantastic characters and team players, but the question there would revolve among other things around whether they have the personality to command the credibility within the dressing room, which is fair and honest. They said Thomas Tuchel is openly accepted to be a top level coach, but recent experiences at Chelsea and Bayern have shown he can be a difficult character. And while there is an acceptance that all the best managers are and should be challenging, United are keen to ensure whatever happens, it doesn't unsettle things even more, which is true. I think what Manchester United have to do with this manager situation is say, is it worth sacking Tenor for this manager? You want to weigh out the pros and the cons. You know, is it worth sacking Tenor for Pep Guardiola? Yes, it is. Is it worth sacking Tenor for Graham Potter? Probably not. Because you've got to weigh out, can the manager work within the club with Ineos? Can the manager work with the players? Because that's a, that's a big thing. And also things like Nagelsmann, which we're going to get into. If we bring in Nagelsmann, we'd have to change the squad massively. It completely crumbled when we brought in Ragnick. Because you've also got to think about the personnel that we have and, and, and how much change would need to happen in order to rebuild the team. So I think some fair points there. Uh, but obviously, it did obviously mention that United do believe there's some interesting coaches working and they are looking at Mossa, Deserby, Michael, Ruben Amarin as, as potential people to bring in. And obviously, with Omar Brada overseeing the Manchester City group, Sorry, I just had loads of people run past me there. It was really weird. But with Omar Brada overseeing the Man City group, which owns Girona, maybe maybe we do go for the Girona manager. Now, there was obviously a little bit of information coming out on Thomas Tuchel. Now, I think Thomas Tuchel is probably out of all the candidates the most experienced manager with Premier League experience. But Ineos might be a bit concerned about working with him because he's a big character. And we know that Ineos will take a lot of power off the manager. However, one of the reasons that Tuchel demanded more of his last two clubs is because PSG and Bayern Munich in recent years haven't been the best run clubs, particularly when Tuchel was there. Obviously, a lot better run than United. But Ineos plan to run us better than you know how PSG operated when Tuchel was there and how Bayern are operating right now, which is good because you know any club runs better than United, but a lot of clubs still aren't run well. It was said that Tuchel has agreed with his agents he wants to take the Man United job if it becomes vacant. There is a lot of work to be done, but some of the new management at Ineos are in favour of Tuchel arriving this summer. There's probably people at Ineos which would be in favour of a Tuchel move, and there's probably people at Ineos that would be in favour of Tenog saying that would be in favour of Potter, would be in favour of the Zerbi. It doesn't mean too much, but what we do know is if we do want Thomas Tuchel, I think he would take Manchester United in a heartbeat because apparently he his favourite place to manage was the Prem. He, he, he also he just he's so naturally good at English, he did like his success in English and stuff. He likes being in England. Anyway, continuing on, going back to this report, it was said in the past Julian Nagelsmann has featured highly on United's potential shortlist. However, the new hierarchy recognises the current squad isn't well equipped to suit a manager who regularly plays a back three. I think Amarin and I think Nagelsmann and I think Motta, while they're probably three of the most exciting names on the managerial candidate list, when you look at the squad, the personnel we have, obviously there will be a lot of outs and a lot of ins in the summer, hopefully. It would be mass changes where we'd have to get recruitment spot on. I think Noel Gushman could be too complex for our current squad. Whereas I think, you know, if you go with a Thomas Tuchel, when you look at the, our squad, it, it, it's safe for Thomas Tuchel is a back four at Bayern. He can sort of adapt. He adapted to play about five at Chelsea because that suited their squad better. He adapted to play about four at Bayern because it suited their squad better. We know that Tuchel's an adaptable manager. It was also said, and I thought this was interesting, so I'd include it in, that former Manchester United interim manager, Ralph Randnick is the famous to replace Thomas Tuchel at Bayern Munich. So, you know what, I'd like Ralph to get the Bayern Munich job because I'd be intrigued to see you know how well it does. Oli was also linked to the Bayern Munich job. I 
I really want to see Oli Gunnar Solskjaer back in management. And it'd be interesting to see how Ralph Rannick did at the Bayern Munich job, where he has, you know, better players around him, because he's done a decent job at Austria. Though, I think while we've been linked to a lot of managers, I think no decision has been made yet. And James Duck has pretty much confirmed that. Ineos probably have an idea of what they want to do, but they're not going to make a final decision until, you know, Wilcox and, you know, Omar Brada have assessed Ten Hag. You know, they would want Ashworth to assess him, but he's probably not going to be here in time. Um, the hierarchy is going to make the final call, not Jim Ratcliffe. And it was said that Eric Ten Hag will effectively be on trial over the next month as Manchester United's new technical director, Jason Wilcox, conducts an audit of the manager's credentials and dressing room relationships before the club make a final decision on Ten Hag's future. Manchester United have tasked Jason Wilcox with providing a detailed assessment of Ten Hag's strengths and weaknesses and relationship with the squad to better determine whether his approach can fit the overarching style of play and philosophy they intend to pursue. Wilcox has this role to sort of, you know, implement the way that United want to play. United are going to have a philosophy, a style that they want to play, and they're going to look at Ten Hag and believe, is he capable of coaching that, but also is he capable of managing the squad further? What's his relationship with the players? What's his strengths? What is, what's his weaknesses? I think the decision will depend on comparing Ten Hag to the managerial candidates that are available for a good price. You know, I don't know if they want to break the bank for De Zerbe, especially because he's not super standout. There's a lot of managers that, you know, for me, I would keep Ten Hag over, and I think Ten Hag's better than, you know, that, you know, they might look at Thomas Frank, they might look at Amarin, they might look at Tuchel, they might look at De Zerbe, and they might say, well, two of those managers, they might believe are better than Ten Hag, but two of them, they might believe are worse than Ten Hag. And then I think Ineos will look at if they can get that manager that they think is better than Ten Hag. If not, they keep the Ten Hag. I think Ineos' decision is based off, you know, what managers are available and if they believe they could do a better job than Ten Hag. And Wilcox will probably be focusing on that now. Um, I don't think any decision on Ten Hag's future will be announced till after the FA Cup final at the end of the season. So I think from, from the next couple of weeks, we're just going to get a lot of manager speculation. Uh, Anthony's been causing quite a stir online. Anthony entered the pitch when United were 3-0 up. The match ended 3-3. He didn't produce any goals, assists, shots, dribbles, crosses, and lost 100% of his aerial duels and 60% of his ground duels. Uh, he did one have technically had one shot, but that was blocked. And then they went up and scored after that blocked shot when he gave the ball away. Didn't take a penalty in the shootout and did celebrate like a bit of an idiot. It was a bit embarrassing because this, if I can understand if it's Manchester City or Liverpool, I'm all for it. If we beat a Premier League team like that, I'm all for it. But Coventry, eighth place championship side when, when you were shocking, you know, I think the, that wasn't a win. It was a win, but it wasn't a win. And I think the mentality of Maguire and Bruno and they were like shaking their heads, just shock, shock, you know, shaking their Coventry players' hands and commiserating them. Whereas Anthony's going, it, it just shows a different in, difference in mentality, doesn't it? Now, I do want to end by just summing up some of the transfer news that's been going about. Fabrizio Romano said on the United stand yesterday that there's no contract on the table and that Moran is leaving United as of today. I think I would keep Varane and sell Lindelof and Maguire. I think Lindelof would be the first centre-back I'd sell. Uh, but it looks like Varane's going to go in on high wages, which is a shame because he's actually been really good for us when he's played. And I would keep him just for one more year, not two, just one more year because he's still a top player in there. He also said that United will face competition for Elise, potentially from Man City, Chelsea and Arsenal. Now, interestingly, Elise reportedly picked Chelsea over Man City in the summer. And then Crystal Palace asked Elise to stay for one more year, and that happened. Um, Arsenal interested in Elise, um, but he is a Manchester United fan. So I think if we generally do want Elise, because Crystal Palace said they'll sell him, I think we can get him over Man City, Chelsea and Arsenal just because he's genuinely a Manchester United fan. Um, I think he rejected City for Chelsea. So it'll be interesting to keep an eye on Elise and what happens there. It was also said that Manchester United are informed on a number of strikers, but the profile is yet to be determined in terms of who they go for this summer. And that was said by Fabrizio Romano. Uh, hopefully it's in Cirque. Cirque would be my first choice. I quite like Cunha, I quite like Sesco, but Cirque for me would be the best scenario because he can facilitate our wingers. And I think we need a striker that can get involved in play because we're not going to give them much service. And that's something that Cirque very much does. It was also said on the left back situation that Harry Amas is highly rated at United and they believe he has lots of potential, but they still want to sign a left back who could make it into the first team next season. Harry Amas turned 17 two weeks ago. I think, you know, when, when they're 19, 18, you think they can break in a bit, but 16, 17 is very young, which is fair. And that Man United's new left-back sign is expected to be in the region of 25 million. And there's nothing definitive, but there is also hope that Luke Shaw can be ready for the FA Cup final. So hopefully next season, Luke Shaw and Malassia stay fit. And when we sign a left back, it's not the end of the world because our other two left backs stay fit. But because of the injury proneness of our left backs, because of Luke Shaw's ageing, I think we do need a left back as well. When maybe Malassia gets moved on, I can't see Luke Shaw being moved on because we know when Luke Shaw is fit, he's probably the best left back in football or, or top three. I mean, I probably wouldn't say he's the best because he's, he's been out quite a lot lately, but he's top three. 
in football when he's fit, 100%. Like, I think he's a very underrated player, but he's never fit, which is annoying. So we definitely need a left-back, but I wouldn't want to spend more than 20 million on a left-back because we need two centre-backs, two midfielders, a right wing and a striker. There's a lot to do. For me, you know, if you can get 15 million left-back, you get Cirque to 35 million, that's 50 million. You get Tordobo for 40 million, that's 90 million. You can get another decent set for 40 million if we can find the gem, that's 130 million. And then... You get at least, say, which is about 50 million, 180 million. You sell a load of players and you can sign two, two midfielders that are maybe 30 million each. One, one's more of a six slash eight, like a Max Weaver. One's maybe like an Andre or a Jao Gomez. I think that'd be good business from United. But we'll have to wait and see. Let me know your thoughts on all the news today. Please do hit that like, subscribe. See you next time. Bye.